from shooting. All right, welcome back everyone. This is HBCU Overdrive, I'm your boy Doc Holiday, And today I have a special guest with me. It is Ken Clark of Tiger Talk Podcast, 1400 Club, you know. Uh, I listen to it, you know, sometimes, most of the time, because that's why I try to get all my information from. And also I do my own research as far as that goes. But man, tell me, uh, Tell us about how y'all got into doing Tiger Talk, bro. Um, man, first of all, man, appreciate you for having me on. Um, you know, we've been, um, Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club started a couple of years ago. Um, Tiger, uh, the 1400 Club, obviously, we, we're an official affinity group now. I always say shout out to the founders, you know, the, the, the whole crew. And um, what they're doing is um, what we're doing as a collective is, is uh is, is dope stuff man they been been donating to athletics since 2013 so we had an idea uh that was pitched a while ago i would say probably 2019 maybe 20 2018 it might the, the conversation kind of got started where we wanted to do a podcast where we you remember there was a time when uh jackson state we were going through a lot of beat writer changes a lot of changes. yeah yeah Aaron ledger and we were, you know, every time we waited on them to tell our story, we always were frowned at what they had to say about us. So, um, uh, so we it started as a labor of love, man. Just, just wanted to be uh, our own, you know. Shout out to Rob J and JSU TV. You know, they do a great job at the university. But hey, man, you yeah, like, the goat. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt, absolutely. <laughs> and um, but we felt like um, that there was an opportunity as a podcast to, to jump into the podcast space and uh, just talk all things HBCU, man. I mean, all, all things Jackson State and in um, and, and, and relevance to HBCUs, uh, but it's primarily dedicated to HB, I mean, to I keep saying HBCU, but it's dedicated to Jackson State. Um, and like I said, you got Corey, who's a producer, the Corey C. And um, what happened with, with, with me, I used to come on with uh, Corey just, to do rec uh, recruiting shows, man. Uh -huh. recruiting, recruiting was my forte. I kept up with all the Jack State recruiting myself and Zoe, Nazio Phillips. Uh, we call him Zoe DeLorean. And, oh, okay. Uh, I, I got him on uh, I, I got him on Twitter also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Suave House on, on Twitter. But uh, yeah, man, we would, I would come on just on, on pe periodically. And then when we first got started, you know, um, Chuck Bishop, Neely, yeah. um, he was a part of it as well which they eventually it evolved into the pregame show. It right. was kind of opened up a spot for a second co-host. So uh, that's when Corey kind of come to me and, and I did like an interview and it, 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 it caught on, man. So I felt like that was a, that was an opportunity to, to, to stay as a part of it. And I'm just doing my part, man. So as that's how we got here now, we bought 275 shows in on Spotify, Damn. all your podcasts, outlets, Apple music, Anchor, I mean, you name it, man. We own about 10 different Spotify, I mean, 10 different uh, platforms. And, uh, but mostly Spotify is where you can find us. Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club. Already, man. It's true. I like that, man. Yeah. Uh, so with me, I, I can say when I came up with the idea of doing this, uh, it was actually uh, in, it was actually in April, but um, I kind of, I basically kind of just uh, scared off for a little bit, you know, a little bit because I want to kind of focus more on trying to get family and everything situated. Mm -hmm. But I decided like, okay, so May, I'm like, you know what? I'm really going to go ahead and do this. Because <laughs> my eventual thought was to do it last year. Yeah. 2021 when we started the uh, spring season. And you know, that, like I said, that's when Scotty, you know, Oscar came into play and stuff like that. And I watched this mm -hmm. show and all that. Um, and then, like I said, CFL and Blue Bloods, but he'd been on for a minute and CFL had came into this play. So yep. I'm like, man, let me, I want to go ahead and do this. So, like, I went on my YouTube channel and, like, I scrubbed almost everything off of it. And just, <laughs> right. like, scrubbed everything off and started yeah, yeah, yeah. anew. Because it's like, I don't want to, I, I didn't want, 
like all the stuff that I put on there, I didn't want nobody to know what the hell I was <laughs> looking at and stuff. But, but, um, you know, I, I I just came up with the idea, like, man, everybody got this HBCU talk, HBCU this, HBCU that. And yeah, we hot right now, for sure. Yeah. So I'm like, man, let me do H Overdrive because, you know what I'm saying, ain't nobody got that. Ain't nobody got the overdrive on that. So I mean, I came up with that name. I I did the, I did my logo and stuff like that. Like I designed everything on how, mm -hmm. on what I did. And um, you know, I told my wife, I was like, you know what, I'm about to do this show. She was at work it yeah. before she did her. She had a weight loss surgery, and I'm like, man, I got on and recorded and stuff like that and put it on YouTube. I was like, okay. I was nervous because I did almost an hour show. <laughs> no doubt. I was, it, it, it was, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, I only got 11 subscribers right now, man. But each time, you know, everybody was like, man, you can keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. So each time I do yeah. it, like on my off days, Tuesdays and Thursdays when I'm off at work. So she's like, yeah, just keep doing it. Just keep doing it and doing it because the more you put out, the more YouTube is going to look at it. So I'm like, okay. And people's going to look at it. I did that. I'm like, yeah. It's easy for me. But yeah. I get the critiquing from her. Because <laughs> she's the first person that sees the show. <laughs> right, that, right, right, right. When I finish everything up, when I finish the editing and all that other stuff, on, when I usually do it on my phone, she the one that sees the show. And she basically like, you need to do this. You need to do that. You don't yeah, need to do this. Executive. You don't need to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's executive producer right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and I and yeah. I told her, I said, you know what? You the executive producer. You tell me what I need to change about what I need to do, what I need to wear, how I need to act. Do I need to be energetic? Do I need to be somber or whatever? Yeah. So I was like, shoot, man, look, I'm you know, yesterday I did my 16th, uh, my 16th episode. Okay. And, uh, Congrats on that. Thank you. Uh, then my 16th episode, I did my first live show last week. Okay. Um, How'd that so go? It was all right. I was kind of nervous. I didn't know how, what to expect. So <laughs> well, hopefully I could get more people to come in and, you know, be more interactive and stuff like that. But yeah. I, I'm getting there. Like, it's, it's, you know, it's all, I'm growing small. Shoot, I just realized I was on the bus going to work uh, this morning. I, like, oh, snap, I got 100 subscribers now. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, man, congrats, man. It, it, hey, that's, I don't have that many on my YouTube page because I don't use it, you know, the yeah. way you do, you do, but that's pretty good, man. To go yes. from 11 to 100, that's, and, 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 how, and, and you, you, all you have to do is keep, you know, build on that, man. And it's, it's on to a thousand. And then and, next thing you know, it's 10,000. And that's what I'm trying, trying, trying to do. That's what I'm trying yeah. to do. But yeah, um, so let's get into it. So yesterday, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I was on Twitter and I guess I was talking to somebody on Twitter and they kept saying like, we're going to go to the ACC and dominate. And that kind of just drove me crazy. It's like, <laughs> dude, we're not yeah, going to the SEC. Yeah, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. How about <laughs> this and that? And then when you came on, I was like, you know what? And you, you, you know, you retweeted, you know, you retweeted it, and then you tweeted back to me. I was like, you know what? And I see everything that was going on on campus. So it's not like yeah. I don't know what's going on on campus because yeah. you can see it every day on through through Neely and 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 Chuck, and then yeah. through uh, Bucky. Yep. Uh, yeah, you just, yeah. yeah, you see, like, you see it every day, like, what they're doing on campus and stuff. So I'm like, okay, so it's not like I'm not in, you know, I'm I, I'm not, I'm zoned out or anything like that because I know what's up. And mm -hmm. it's not like I'm, I don't know what's up when I go down there in October for homecoming or even I could go down there before that. Right. But, you know, you came on there and we just chopped it up and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get this interview because some people just don't understand what's going on. And they have this fairy tale, the, the fairy tale thinking in their head, like, okay, where are we going to be this? If we do this, we're going to be this. We're going to, how about we just start at square one? 
So the first question we're going to go into what the one of the toggle points we talk about, what do you feel like the state of the swag is? Um, how do you feel like <clears throat> the swag is go uh, going um, in this new, uh, you know what I'm saying, day and age that we got going on right now? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, um, first of all, I, I would say that the swag is in really good shape, man. This has been um as a conference we can start with the addition of FAMU and Bethune Cookman so we've gotten a full season with them under the belt FAMU comes in they got a really strong brand they got a really good program and then you know we played them last year seven to six game um, yeah and we didn't you know we had to basically win out and they was on our tails the whole year so bringing in um a, a strong brand like FAMU and a really solid, strong brand like Bethune Cookman, adding them to the swag first and foremost puts us in really good footing because we pick up Florida, uh, the Florida market. Right. Um, that's the first thing. So one season under our belt, um, you get Coach Prime comes into Jackson State and uh, he brings in a lot of eyes, a lot of attention, a lot of hype, a lot of, um, you know, come. He, can't, he came in, told us what it is he wanted to do, wanted to change the game jumps head first into the recruiting trail. You see us pull out two monster recruiting classes back to back, you know, right. top to the CTS. Um, and then what happens is after that first year, bro, it trickles down to like everyone. Gramlin hires Hugh Jackson, uh, which, you know, we didn't expect to see Broderick Fobbs, who had a lot of success at Gramlin. Um, he walked out the door, but yeah. walking out of the door, they bring, they bring in coach Hugh Jackson, which is a big name. Uh, former NFL coach. Um, then you have Prairie View, who we played in the SWAC championship last year. Right. Uh, got Eric Dooley. Coach Dooley gets hired at Southern because um, Coach Fobbs, I mean, um, uh, Coach um, Dawson Odoms goes to Norfolk State. So right. there's a lot of movement. Uh, Alabama State brings in Coach Eddie Robinson, uh, Jr. Um, they got a new coach. Um Connell Main are still strong. So what you've seen transpire with the conference, man, the recruiting has been off the chain, you know, led by us, FAMU's doing that. They, they did their thing in the offseason. Gramlin had a monster recruiting class. Alabama A&M had a monster recruiting class. Alabama State had a monster recruiting class. Yeah. Um, let's not forget about Texas Southern has a dynamic quarterback, Andrew Body, who just, you know, right along with Shador, you know, came out on the scene um, and really – you know, put himself out there and got a lot of followers. So you got some hype with Texas Southern. Coach Bubba McDowell over at uh, Prairie View takes over at Prairie View. So Texas is solid. Mm -hmm. Louisiana is, is solid. Uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff got some work to do. Coach but, uh, Doc Gamble, he, um, they, they, you know, they, but to see Skylar Perry return, I thought he was gone. He kind of mm -hmm. got some ability at quarterback. I mean, he got a chance to, you know he can he can he can play man and he, he you know none of the sneeze that he he's a little, little bit inconsistent but he's a he's a baller in a game. right so with Arkansas then you factor in Alabama with the two Alabama teams strong you got all the big classics Florida classic Bayou classic we're playing in the Southern Heritage Classic next uh next this upcoming season at Tennessee State but uh Mississippi Valley man Valley played everybody tough last year and that's what I wanted to get it to right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coach, De Coach Dancy had a monster recruiting class. Shout out to them. It looked like they got all their scholarships um, and they was able to put a lot more players on scholarships. So expect them to be competitive. And mm -hmm. then, you know, last but not least, uh, we don't want to leave out um, – um, who did I leave out? I think I covered everybody. I think Alcorn. I did. Oh, Alcorn. Alcorn, I'm sorry. You know, Alcorn is consistently uh, in the running. They still got a chance to win the West. Don't sleep on them. Got a new quarterback coming in from La Tech. They got a lot of key pieces returning, and they had a lot of depth. And then you got Coach Seth Thompson uh, coming back as de defense coordinator, who, which wound up leaving Arkansas Pine Bluff. Um, and now he's back to the defensive coordinator. And Gramlin hired Alcorn's off the defensive coordinator, uh, Coach Thornton. Yeah. So there's a, little, there's a little shuffling. But this is what I'll say. This is probably the most hyped season and the most anticipated season we've seen in quite some time. So if I'm the SWAT commissioner, I'm ecstatic about my product and my conference because, man, it's a healthy conference. You know, with the help of, like I said, Coach Prime, and we, we were able to 
ride that wave as a collective and, and, and build some momentum. So, hey man, it, it, I, I, I've, I've gone on record talking to Blue and, and others who are in the YouTube space saying that this is one of the most important uh, seasons that the SWAC is going to have in quite some time. Because when you have the hype, when you have everybody talking and all the eyes, we got a lot of opportunities to play out of conference and we got to win them games because we haven't historically won them games. So um, the SWAC is in really good shape, man. We, we, we about as healthy as we've been in a very long time. It's a lot of parity. I know Jack State's the favorite in most mm -hmm. eyes, but they, it's going to be a lot of teams in the conference that's going to try to ruin that party for us, man. So, right. And I don't think that people – People got to understand our schedule is not as easy as they think it is. We play three blue bloods out the gate. We play yep. Family, we play Tennessee State, then we play Grambling and Jackson, and it's not going to be easy. All three of those games, we're going to get their best shot. So, and then we follow that up with Mississippi Valley, who plays us tough anyway. So, those first four games, man, hey, if we ain't coming to handle business like we didn't, like we did at South Carolina State. We can find ourselves being in the same situation. So, right. Yeah, because I'm going to tell you like this. I watched the South Carolina State game, the Celebration Bowl. After I seen what was going on and how their defense was just walking us up and, you know, off the field, <clears throat> I turned on to high school football. <laughs> I turned I on to do that, man. I was, I was I, sitting right there looking at it. I couldn't turn it off. I turned on to the, I turned on to the uh, five A uh, Division two state championship oh, they got, game. They, they, they got the momentum, man. And when yeah. they got the momentum, they never gave it back. And and the turnovers is what killed us. You know, you can't turn the ball over in the other team's red zone. Not once, not twice, but three times. Three times, yeah. We gave them three, just horrible turnovers, man. Yeah. I mean. We get we gifted them 21 points right there. <laughs> if you yep. take away that 21 points that we gifted them, yeah, it'd be a tie it'd game. Be, it'd be a tie game. But let me say this though. I don't want to say gifted as if they didn't create it. Like they they made it happen, but we still got to take care of the football. Let's say we don't turn the ball, the ball over and we punt, we might be talking about a different game. It might be a 10-10 barn burner. You never can tell though. Right. But they 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 took us out, they took us behind the woodshed and, and, and gave us a good old fashioned butt kicking, man. Yeah, because I was like, you know what? I was with that. I was like, you know what? I turned on I turned on the high school championship game, South Oak Cliff versus Liberty Hill. I yeah. was like, look, my niece, my nieces are at the game at Jerry World. I'm gonna watch this. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, fortunately they won. So, you know, yeah, yeah. Basically, it was the first championship in Dallas, the city of Dallas in like 60 some years. But yeah. I ain't gonna count that because I know what I saw in 1988 with the Carter team. Yeah. where they destroyed everybody. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, I, but hopefully uh, Coach Prime, I've been hearing that he's been working on everything, trying to get the depth as far as the offensive line goes. Um, oh, yeah. The defense is still going to be going and moving fast, playing fast. Um, it's just all about the offensive line and, and can we get a running game? Can we, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Can we hold the blocks up for for yeah, the think, running back to get through or to for Shador to pass? Yeah, you won't see what you saw last year. Um, it's only two start two players, two starters and three um three total, well, four total players from that previous O line that's returning. Um that actually played. Right. You know, Tony Gray, uh Demetri Jordan, uh, you're looking at uh, uh Vincent Sampson, and then you're looking at uh uh, Kirk Ford, but we brought in, they addressed the O-line. I expect this O-line to be far better than what we saw last season. Right. And I'll say this, I know we, you know, we hired Coach Bartoloni who comes out of an offense that was air raid, but I can tell you right now, the number one priority for us this year is to run the ball. That's yeah. the priority. So, you know, we're not worried about QB1, Shador Sanders uh, throwing the ball. Uh, I think if he has a running game, he's going to really – that's going to really make us dynamic. We can't be one-dimensional like we were last year. Yeah. So, then we're going to shift over to the state of the – you know, state of HBCU football. So, we've already gotten to where about South Carolina State because, of course, they won the Celebration Bowl. So, with all the movement and the moving and shaking that's going on in HBCU football, how you feel that – is going to be as it's going to turn out for this coming season. 
Man, it's going to be good, man. I, I've already covered the SWAC. South Carolina State was young, and they were still – people look at their record and say, oh, they won six, seven games when they beat us. That record was, wasn't indicative of the team that they had. You know, I know they lost uh, the Kobe Durant to the NFL. Uh, they lost um, another D lineman, I think, transferred out to FBS school. But they brought in a lot of transfers. They, they, had, they signed a really good class. Uh, mm -hmm. A few is – Rock solid. South Carolina State is gonna to have to be. They're the favorite to win the MIAC again. Um, Norfolk State is gonna be solid. Um, yeah. I think uh, North Carolina Central is gonna be a sleeper in that conference as well. Um, but I think the MIAC is okay. MIAC is gonna be fine, man. They 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 gonna play the way that they play. But even you got to factor in North Carolina A and T. I know they're gonna be playing in the Big South. Right. Uh, like they, they they'll tell you Big South a bus. It's their year to try to win that conference, man. You know, Hampton's going to be solid again. Howard over in the MEAC is going to be solid. So I think the state of the world from HBCU standpoint, we get kicked off August 27th. Um, I want to say it's the 27th. Whatever The first Saturday is going to be the SWAC MEAC Challenge. You got Howard versus Alabama State. So we yeah, all that's, that's the first Saturday right there. Yep, first Saturday. So we – We'd be in a, we're about a month, a little over uh, a little over a month away from month and a half, month and maybe a week away from that game, and um, man, that's gonna tell us that's gonna tell us what we need to see because I think Alabama State and both Howard have improved. I kind of got Alabama State edging them out, not just because I'm a sweat guy, but um, from what I've seen Alabama State do and what I've seen them bring in. So this is one of the best years, man. I think with the HBCU, we kind of we're dealing with like an HBCU renaissance. And I think this is the time, man, with a lot of content creators like yourself, myself, and all of us that are talking about it. We're telling our own story. And I think that we're also, um, we're keeping the hype going. We're keeping the momentum going. I think that it's going to be a lot of eyes. So we got to show up, though. We got to, right. you know, we can talk a lot, but we got to show up, man. We got to donate to our schools. We got to make sure we're going to games, the games that we can. Right. Uh, we got to, we got to. Watch if we're not at the game. We need to have all our TVs on, making sure that we're, you know, getting those, um, you know, that viewership, you know. Yeah. So, but I think this is our year, man. This is the most pivotal year for HBCUs from a football standpoint. That's my that's my honest opinion on that. And I think we're gonna I think we're gonna show up and we're gonna represent. Okay, and uh, I know I've been seeing like uh, as far as HBCUs, other HBCUs like. Uh, Bowie State um, having a whole lot of turnover because yeah. the head coach went to uh, yeah, yeah, Morgan State. Probably yeah, Morgan that. State. Yeah, and then um, Sewell went over there with him also. Um, so that left the whole vacuum. So I'm looking at it where like almost the whole defensive backfield is gone. Yeah. Like, like they. I mean, but I'm not gonna say they haven't recruited or anything like that, but. That was the <clears throat> to me. That was the strength of the team was the the defense, especially the DBs that were flying around, t uh, knocking heads off and and creating turnovers. Uh, also looking into uh, Edward Waters, mm -hmm. that's moving up from uh, NAI. And they're in their second year of uh, Division Two for the NCAA. So I have an interview with Coach Morgan <laughs> next nice. Tuesday, um, and we're going to talk about the state of his program. But I like how they're rebounding from what we saw in 2021 in the spring to what we're going to see now. Um, we also you also talk about um, I would say Fayetteville State, but uh, yeah, Fayetteville State, yeah, Fayetteville mm -hmm. State, Elizabeth City. Uh, yeah. You also got uh, – I know Savannah State has a great – you know, has a good, solid football team also. Yep. Uh, and uh, Lane College. People are yep. sleeping on Lane College because, you know, like uh, – Lane, Miles. Miles, Allen, yeah. Miles, they was – they was two – they was – Langston always, you know. Yeah, they was like a touchdown – two touchdown or two away from being in the championship game. Absolutely. So, so you know, uh, Lane College. Yeah, right. so they they was you know they was close. So it's like to me, I'm I'm looking at football from what we were supposed to see back in the '60s and the '70s, man. Yeah, and you know before integration, and I'm looking at it to where it's like it's it's uh 
fun to watch. It's entertaining. And I don't think you, nobody's going to leave their seats when they go watch the, you know, go see these uh, <laughs> schools play. Yeah. Uh, so now let, let's, uh, we're going to get to what everybody been talking about for the last couple of days. Yeah. Conference realignment. Yep. And <laughs> so, so we head off with UCLA and USC wanted to join the big, uh, the big 10 in 2024. Mm-hmm. We also got OU in Texas going to the SEC in 2025. Y'all right. did in order for you to make that up, you move BYU, UCF, Houston, and Cincinnati to the Big 12, in right. which I would have said Houston would have been a good move for the, for them to be in the Big 12 a long time ago. But, you know, you've been – I know you've been in Texas. you lived in Texas for yep. a while. Yep. And you know how politics is in Texas. They didn't want that. <laughs> right, right, right. So – so now it's their time. It's their time to shine. It's their time to you know show everybody what's going on. Mm-hmm. But the state of conference realignment, and I know it's not going to end. There is a never-ending story. What yeah. do you? How do you feel about what's going on with all these conferences shifting and moving? Well, I mean, it's like what Coach Prime said at the XFL uh, when he did the interview on ESPN. He mentioned. You know, it's about chasing the bag, man. These schools are, let me just say this, these schools have been doing for quite some time. See, us being in the HBCU world, we've always just assumed that they they had it like that. A lot mm-hmm. of these schools been operating in the red, bro. They've been operating in a lot of these, they've been operating off the credit of, of TV deals and, and right. all that. So if you really look at, let's, let's use UCLA for an example. Okay. UCLA, there's an article by in Sports Illustrated. You can read it, right, you know, and we we touched on it a little bit, but a lot of it, this was a, a make or break move for UCLA. So what I'm saying is that they've been so overextended financially in, their, in these athletic departments that mm-hmm. this move was about survival. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it, think about it. Desperate times call for desperate measures. So that was a major jump, you know, and I'm, you know, somebody that's, you know, in the, on the West Coast in Cali. So I, I know how big of a deal that is to see UCLA and, 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 and USC go. But anyway, here's the point. That just kind of kicks it off. Being in Austin, Texas, living in Austin um, and being around UT, it was, yeah. it was, it was, it was insane to kind of hear, wow, you, you know, UT is going to the SEC. But at the end of the day, those are the, that's where we started. We started with the Big Ten and the SEC. Then now you're looking at the Pac-12 mm-hmm. is looking at because it, it doesn't stop with UCLA and, and, and USC. It carries on to Washington and Oregon, possibly right. trying to join Big Ten as well, which is going to leave a gap to with the Pac-12. So what the Pac-12 mm-hmm. is going to probably do, you're going to see schools like Fresno State, you're going to see schools like San Diego State, who've had some success recently, get okay. maybe pulled over, maybe a Boise, you know, maybe a, um, you know, whoever, BYU, whatever, you pull them in, and then they are looking at forming a pack with the eight, the ACC. So you mm. got the ACC, which is all the way on the East Coast, man, predominantly, forming a alignment with the Pac-12. And like I said, this is about survival because right. if you get all these, if you get this big super conference with the Big Ten, the SEC, that's going to cripple the ACC as well as the Pac-12. So in their mind, they're like, let's come together. Then there's a trickle down effect because now the power five just became a power three. Okay. And now you got the lesser dance or the middle guys like the, right. the saves, the AACs, the the Sun Belt, the WAC, you know, not necessarily the WAC, but the Mountain West Conference. Mm-hmm. So now you're looking at it's going to be a trickle down, trickle down, trickle down. The big guys come take from the little guy. In, the, in this scenario, the little guy was the Pac-12 in comparison to the Big 12. Right. Big 12 come take two of they two, two to four of their best. Okay, Pac-12 say, I'm going to go to this lesser than conference and take four, four of theirs. So when you see this realignment, it's a domino effect. Right. 
So here's what's happening. Now, this is why everybody got to calm down because <laughs> you calm down because it's eventually going to make its way to the HBCU ranks, but it's not going to make its way. We don't know if it's going to make its way the way we're seeing it happen right there. Because if you look at Conference USA, and I did this last night, uh-huh. and Conference USA lost all their teams with three. And then what they went and did was they went and looked at pulling your Jacksonville State, who was a right. chance that just moved up. They grabbed the Sam Houston State. You see what I'm saying? So when you factor all that in, the Sun Belt grabs some teams from Conference USA. The Athletic American, the American Athletic Conference grabs some teams from Conference USA. Conference USA grabs some teams from LCS and some other areas, other spaces. Mm-hmm. So when you get to when you get to the um, the group of fives, right? You're running out of options to go from an FBS standpoint. So right. the question is, what does that mean when it comes to you know how does that you know bodes well from HBCU? Only thing I'm saying is, with this HBCU resurgence and renaissance. Mm-hmm. There is an opportunity for us as an HBCUs to maybe look at moving, making that FBS jump. But we're not talking about going solo. We're talking about moving up as a collective. Right. Because there is financial benefits to moving up collectively. And the reason why you want to move up collectively, if that's the first option, and, and, and it's got to be that way, because a part of that that makes everybody can calm down with you preserve your culture and you preserve a lot of the traditions that we say. Right. If I don't lose my rivalry games, I don't lose the games that matter to us Mm -hmm. and I can still make money. That's a win-win. Why wouldn't you look at that? Right. And people got to understand this fascination with being tied to what's called FCS. That was something that was created to cripple us in the first place. So our rightful position is to be in the best financial footing that we could possibly be in, bro. Okay. It ain't about, it ain't about just saying, oh, we can't go FBS. FBS is 22 additional scholarships. People don't yeah. even know that in the 90s, we, we funded 95 scholarships at Jack State. We did this already, bro. But people don't know their history, so they just be like, 22 scholarships. Yeah, I remember. And I remember when I, yeah, and I remember back then when I was in, uh, when I was at Jackson State in the late 90s, uh, 97, 2001, like, I seen, like, you know, instead of having us the 63, 65 on, on the field, we we had about 85, 90 players. I mean, it's, it's, it's documented. I'm saying there was points in time where we, we when there was no real limitations, we, we funded scholarships. Man, here's what I'll say. Do the math, man. People be like, man, you got to fund 22 more scholarships. Well, have you asked yourself how much that costs? Or are you just saying 22? All right. Jack State's tuition is about, what, $8,500 a year, right? True. And let's just say we're going to round up for this example. Let's say it's $10,000. let us say a a scholarship is $10,000, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's just factor in uh, uh, tuition, room and board, whatever. 10,000 for the scenario. 22 times 10 is 220,000. Don't sound so impossible now, dude. It really don't. It's not. We just, we just, I'm saying, I always try to get people, it's okay to think critically about an idea and not lose your emotional footing, man. We, we can't keep getting emotional. Everything, bro, Doc, you do this every day. Every day, you're trying to put yourself in a better situation for you and your family. That's right. Why is it that when we talk about us doing things and operating and doing better business on a level, you mentioned Scotty, for example, you know, Scotty has, you know, really delved into like contracts and stuff like that. Something I'm not really interested in, (laughs) but there are people who are, and there are people who, because the whole point of that is operating in in a manner in which it's better business for you and yours. Right. But you know what happens when people start talking about stuff like that, Doc? People get uncomfortable because it requires them, it requires eyes to look at the situation and people are going to get called out for bad business and then you're going to be held accountable and you're going to have to elevate your thought process. 
Right. And that's you what did. you see happening. The resistance ain't about, bro, the resistance ain't about just the idea because people say, well, what do you mean? Bro, we in the swag. <laughs> even if we, even if we do announce that we would go FBS, it probably ain't gonna happen to 2025, 2026, bro. Right. You know and that's saying? when your money, and that's when the money's gonna get bigger than what it's supposed to be. That's what I'm saying, bro. So what you do now is you pay, you gotta read the room. HBCUs need to read the room and you gotta look around. And you got to see what's happening around you. They're giving us the blueprint. They right. forming. Why is it that they forming these packs together and making super conferences? Hell, I said, I tweeted. I said, well, it's time for our HBCUs to come together and form a, a super conference. And, and we need to. And we need to. We got the culture. We got the we got the eyes. We got the momentum. Fuck it. We, if we moved, if the SWAC moved up as a whole, bro, we get the. So you mean to tell me we can play a full eight game swag schedule or let's just say eight uh, eight game conference schedule mm -hmm. and i get to schedule so check this out if we're fbs um mo carter mentioned this on uh locked on hbcu okay one of the things he mentioned was if we are let's say we are lower tier fbs school when we go play lsu this time instead of getting 250,000 or 300 400,000 guaranteed Troy got paid one point something million dollars yeah. for that game, but that's a hey, hey, that's a that's a big payday. That's a bag, and you get conference payouts, and you get you know opportunities for both. So so let's let's look at it. Prairie View had six wins. Who all had six wins last year? Alcorn has six Alcorn wins. has uh, Alabama, uh, Alabama A and M, wins. Florida A and M has six wins. Jackson, State. here's what I'm saying. Every team in your conference that gets six, seven wins get a bowl opportunity. So you yep. got opportunity for payouts. You got, but here's what it's gonna require though. It's gonna require us as a collective to get our shit together, bro. Pardon my French, but we gotta get our shit together at home. Nah, speak house. the truth. It speak the truth. That we I mean, that's continue. We gotta continue to elevate our footing. Jack State, please forgive me, JSU Tigers, but I'm gonna be speaking <laughs> real, bro. I don't apologize, but. We had the worst facilities three years ago, in my opinion. We had the worst facilities, some of the worst facilities in the SWAC. Thank goodness Coach Prime showed up because it wasn't until, and, I, and I'm only speaking from a football standpoint. I'm not talking about everything. But right. if you do talk about everything, because you do have to, you need, you're going to have to have golf. You're going to have to make sure we got all the programs to go FBS. We remember we screwed up and we messed the bag up with our previous, pre, two, pre, two previous presidents ago. Yeah, so Carolyn Myers and yeah, uh, we went in the red. Yeah, we went in the red on monies, and we we had that we ate into our reserves, and we had no money. We had to cut the golf program. Yeah, so I'm just saying, Jackson State has momentum, mind you. We play we play FB. We, there's no FBS in other sports, but we play D1 in every, every sport in football. Mm -hmm. So so here's what I'm saying: if Jackson State basketball team was pretty good we can make a tournament run just like st mary what was that uh, uh what was the name of that school that played this year with uh can uh with uh, coach holloway was it st mary uh, uh, st uh, 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 peter's, Saint peter's. Mm -hmm. but that's what i'm saying that was a small school that went on a run do you know that jackson state could do the same thing because we get to, we go to the same ncaa tournament as duke in north carolina go ahead but remember, we also did it the same way as far as HBCU basketball with um, Hampton. Well, they Hampton, went, Texas they won against Iowa State, State, North Carolina, North Carolina State, State, yeah, North Carolina, and yeah. So, so, so what I'm saying is, is that the reason we're comfortable doing it on that level and not on football is because it's many of us was born into it. Like FCS was created in '78, bro. Right. I was born in '82, so we kind of pick up where we, we what the way it always been is the way it is. You see what I'm saying? Like, we don't want to challenge things, but if you go and look into the history, I go back and say, well, wait a minute. You mean to tell me in 1977, all of us played on the same level? It really was no FCS, FBS? Yeah. It was just D1. FBS, F, uh, one double A, and we covered this on the show when we talked about the historical data that's out there. Mm-hmm. Where there was the plan in place designed for to lesser than make us the lesser dance to cripple us, take our better talent, 
have their our players go patronize their programs. And now you see what transpired, you know, but all I'm saying is, is that the time is now to start looking at getting your affairs in order. So in the event that an opportunity that presents itself to put you in better footing, you'll be ready to roll and not trying to get ready. That's right. all we say. So I, I was on a Swag Buzz uh, live show last night and I was talking yeah. to him and Mr. Ford. And okay. basically, I told Swag, hey, look, you got to understand, I could give you an example uh, of a team that went, that was FCS Division One AA, and they mm -hmm. moved up, and it took them so long to, to become successful. I, I gave them an example, uh, University of North Texas. Back right. They was North Texas State University at the time. They was in the Old Southland Conference. Yep. When they moved up to FBS, like, their facilities was – subpar you okay. talking about subpar they they this facility was almost worse than ours at just state and we're hbcu yeah and yeah, you yeah. talking about unt they got probably about over thirty thousand students and so i'm wow. like it took them so long to get to the point where they could become relevant and then also you have to understand i said well you he was like well if they had the players on the field that's like of course you can have the players on the field but you also got to do the recruiting because look where they at. You in the middle, of, you you are 30 miles, you is 30 minutes from Dallas. Yeah, you up in Denton, yeah. You're in 30 minutes from Dallas, you're 30 minutes from Fort Worth. You are in the state of Texas. You're not going to try to get all the top-notch recruits to come to, look, you know, UNT to come play football. Because yep. they thinking about Texas, A&M. TCU, uh, TCU, yeah, yeah. SMU, uh, SMU, yeah, Texas yeah. Tech, it, it, SMU, it's, and, SMU and was another even, way too. But college and state now, man, that's yeah. another one. Even F. Austin, they got Austin a lot state. of schools. Sam yeah. Houston, Houston, man, Texas is a is a is a it's a hotbed. <laughs> and, and so I was trying to let him know. I'm like, look, when they they became relevant around about 2002, 2003. Okay, but they fell back off. Because they you, you're trying to compete, you're trying to compete with in a blue blood football state yeah. that they're going, these kids are going to go to the, the two biggest main schools is UT and Texas AM. Right. And you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you you just have to kind of go and recruit. And that's the reason why it's another thing like, okay, so with TCU, even though I ain't going to say they was, F, you know, they didn't move up, but they was already FBS. But the state of their program until LaDainian Thompson got over to TCU, like they was, they was like walking garbage cans. Yeah, yeah. They <laughs> so were, they were, they were, <laughs> so, yeah, so when he got there there, and, and, and Coach Franchoni got there and then Franchoni left to go to, uh, what was that, Texas a &M, and then he had uh, Gary Patterson. Gary yeah. Patterson had to do more with less. He turned nice. a he turned a three-star linebacker into like a top-notch defensive end. <laughs> and Jerry yeah. Hughes. Yep. He yep. he he recruited he recruited a red rifle, Andy Dalton from Katy, Texas. You know, he get he went into the he went into the middle of South Dallas and got boy Raphael the Priest out of uh Madison High School. He yeah. got Latanz Dunbar from South Oak Cliff. He went into these places to get these players. It is not like I'm saying, yes, it's the players, but it's also the coaching. It's also you but that's gonna be, give that's the gonna money. Be like, yeah, you got to get the right coaching. Yeah, you can you can have all the resources and the best facilities and you got a bad coach and you still won't be able to do much, you know. So we're going to I'm going to ask you about the impact. I know I've seen the impact with Coach Prime doing over uh, at Jackson State, but. What do you think he's make his impact is uh, as far as for HBCU football as a whole? I mean, he's done. He's done. I mean, it's night and day from what it used to be. The um, coach Prime is probably the greatest marketer, uh, self promoter that we've ever seen in our in our lifetime. I mean, we've yeah. never seen anything like this. Every time he's done something, it's been, you know, it's been a gravity that has pulled people into watching everything that he do and everything. So 
with that being said, it's like when he come into this space, it's like, wow, you know, we were already a big brand, you know, arguably the biggest brand. I know a lot of others would, would, would argue that same point. Right. But when you have uh, a Jackson State that really we needed a football coach, man, you know, and to get Deion Sanders, though, that's like insane bro like i'm still not over that like, uh, like i don't I, i'm i don't know about nobody else bro i'm not over the fact that we got Deion sanders our head coach so man we we what we've seen him be able to do in a sh- such a short period of time that the amount of hype that he's created to sign the number one player in the, in the country to come to the hbcu and you gotta keep in mind bro like coach prime I mean, I, I, I don't know that he's he's gone in anybody's living room to recruit anybody. Mm-hmm. He has done the majority, if not all, of what he's doing right now through social media and using his platform, using marketing, uh, like I said, through social media. And the hype is there. The hype. If you want to know what the magnitude of the hype is, let's look at what we're doing right now. Right. This platform come, come about as a result of you being affected and being provoked to move by others who are in this space doing what you're doing. And here's the thing, they come about as a result of him. So there's a lot of things that have spun off from Coach Prime's arrival to the SWAC. Uh, it has put a lot of eyes. You've seen games get moved to ESPN. You've seen yeah. um, um, viewership, you know, um, elevate. You've seen, you've seen a, a, the number one attendance FCS school grow in the midst of a COVID pandemic, in the midst of a pandemic. So imagine no pandemic, maybe we had 50,000 this past season, but I do yeah. expect, I expect us to hit 55K uh, in 2022, this season. We got four home games, but from an HBCU standpoint, man, we went, I'll, I'll give you an example, HBCU Media Day, I want to say in 2019, because there wasn't one in 2020, I don't think, because of the pandemic. Right. I mean, it was it was it was maybe 30, you know, people trying. I don't I don't know. Like it, it was it was it was a small number that were looking to get in the room. And that number was tenfold in 20 in 2021. Mm-hmm. First media day. You can only imagine what it's going to be for this year. So you can imagine the amount of requests and the amount of people, the amount of eyes. I saw Coach Prime's. You know, Coach Prime made the video with the pregame show, donating half his salary to get some things. Yeah, I've seen that too. I just seen that alert come across Sports Center. I've got more Sports Center and Bleacher Report alerts on Jackson State in the past year and a half than I've gotten in my entire damn life, man. I right. Mean, so if you want to know the impact of this, man, man, it's something that we do. We're talking about on a regular, and it's like uh, the best example I could give is like. Maybe it's a phenomenon, man. It's 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 like you know, Air Jordan getting his first pair of shoes. It's like LeBron coming to the NBA, or just you know, it's 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 in that category because we're seeing things we ain't never seen before, and that's something that you have to account for. Now, there's been a lot of resistance. There's been because you know HBCUs are proud, man. We don't we 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 we're, we're uh, known for getting it out of the mud. So, right. When this when this when this rich dude show up, this famous guy show up and start trying to change things, we say, hey, look, hey, well, hold on, bro, you ain't one of us. You ain't got it out the mud. But in actuality, the man from Fort Myers, he got his he got his finally got his degree from Talladega, and and you can feel how you want to feel about he that. got it out the mud. To he me, I feel he man. got it out the mud. But, it, but again, we gotta. He has he has re-energized. A, a a culture that already was was on solid footing, but we just needed a jolt, man. And Coach Prime came in and just have really just taken the HBCU world by storm. That we've got more eyes on HBCU football from people who, not the regular folk. The regular folk got to calm down. They, they we've been doing that, but it's mm-hmm. the people that didn't know who Jackson State was. It's the people that called us Jacksonville State. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. It's, it's the people who. They never know what a, you know, a, 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 they didn't know about a, 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 a Alabama state. They only knew about Alabama. And I know that Alabama know about Alabama state, but there's people that are watching and paying attention now. There's a younger generation that's being affected in ways that we won't even know until years on down the road. So to them, Coach Prime is their, is their Michael Jordan, is, is their, um, 
LeBron? Is there Eddie Robinson? Is there W.C. Gordon? You know, Jay Gaither. These names are these yeah. figures. But this is a larger than life figure that came to a very, you know, storied culture, and and he has. It's been a great marriage so far. If you if you ask me, I mean, I think HBCU sports is very healthy right now, especially HBCU football. You know. All right. And, uh, and yeah. my last and my last thing, what? How do you see Jackson State? What do you see the plans for the future for Jackson State? Uh, right now is to dominate, try to dominate the swag. That's the first and foremost. We we got to win consistently. Um, every time we step on the field, we got to go play. We're not, you know, our schedule is our schedule. We got our schedule for the 2022 season. I believe our schedule is the blueprint for the way we should go. Because if, okay. really, if we can really get our programs up to par and do what we're trying to do, look at how dope that is. We got 10 HBCUs on the schedule this year, 10 in one FCS. That's the blueprint, you know, to be able to fund our programs successfully at a high level and keeping all the money in-house and make the money while we play each other. And we don't have that need. Now, I know everybody can't do that, but if we, there's a lot of things we can do better. But um, what I say is this, Jack State got, the, the plan is to dominate. Right. We want to dominate the day. We want to go 13 and 0 this year, including the SWAC championship as well as the celebration bowl that we left on the table last year. We didn't win the celebration bowl. We want to repeat as SWAC champions. We want to win. And then we want to go into the 2023 season. We want to finish in the top 30 in recruiting for the class of 2023. We want to beat Texas State next year. In San Marcos, I can't oh. wait to come to Texas to see that game. I'll be at that game. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'll, I'll make my four-hour drive down there. Yes, sir. You know, and and we want to, we want to, we want to revenge against ULM in 2024. We want to beat them, and we just we want to beat Campbell this year. But we want to continue to elevate our facilities at the rate that we're seeing taking place. The AAC looks beautiful outside and inside they've done a lot of things made some changes we got to get coach omar uh, a, some more better facilities with baseball we got to yes yeah we got to get um the um you know the softball field uh, the, uh volleyball i mean uh, not volleyball but us uh, softball and a uh, uh, soccer field we got to get the tennis courts we got tennis courts look good they blew um we got to get a new track and field we got to right we got a lot of things that we are currently doing and a lot of things that we're looking to do. And we got to continue to elevate and grow our athletic budget so we can position ourselves that if an opportunity presents itself and SWAC say, hey, we're ready to roll, then we're looking at, hey, we're going to elevate ourselves to that next level. And then if Maybe the SWAC decided they don't want to go, and, and there's an opportunity from an FBS standpoint for maybe six, five, four to six schools. Maybe can maybe make that jump collectively, and mm -hmm. we look at that. But that's what I think is a short is is a, is a short um, short term goal for us is to is to win now, dominate, stay dominate in the space that we're in, all while preparing for that next level if that opportunity presents itself. That's what we do. All right. Man, all I have to say is, as far as for everybody else, get your affairs in order. That's correct. That, that's all I have to say. If you try that's to what make that, schools are doing. yeah, yeah, you mm -hmm. try to make that jump. You want to make that jump. Get your you get your internal affairs in order before you do anything else. Because if you don't, you're gonna be looking like boo boo the fool. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a real thing for some. FBS talk is not a real thing for some some HBCUs. It, right. It, all HBCUs are not on the same footing. All HBCUs are not uh, in the same situation. So we this one size fits all. It, it don't work. We got some schools that got this but don't have that. We got this and don't have that. We all of us have some have, have we we have some have nots. We got some gaps that we got to try to fi figure out. Right. And if you if you know anything like I know about our head coach, the man has a uncanny ability to close gaps pretty quickly. Pretty so much. If there is something that's if the goal is to elevate in the next three to four years, and there's something that's I this is let me be real. Let me can I just let the cat out of the bag and I shut up? Go ahead. 
<laughs> the, reason, the reason I want Coach Prime to continue to press is because I already know this is a long-term goal. This ain't something that we can do tomorrow. Right. If he's pushing to do it, Doc, then that might solidify that he stay at Jack State a little while longer. I'm oh, trying yeah. to keep Coach Prime at Jack State longer. Oh, yeah. I know, I know the outsiders want him gone tomorrow. No, 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 no. Like I tell you, no, 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 no. I want him there as long as he can. So if he's willing to invest in and in, in, in really do what it takes to, to get us where we need to be, and the president and, and, and the athletic director and the head coach and the alumni base and the, and the administration is, is, is all on board and we can make this shape and make this happen, why not, man? Why not? Let's go for oh, it. Yeah. Go big to go home. And oh, guess yeah, what? Man. If we don't jump up, we find ourselves better than we started and we stay where we at. Other than right. that, that's it, brother. Well, man, it's an honor to have this conversation with you, to do this uh, – interview with you. I don't even call it an interview, man. I just call it chopping it up like we do it on the space. With the bro. Yeah. yeah. So, man, tell everybody where they can find you at again, man. Man, I'm, like I said, again, Ken Clark, Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club. Follow us on at Tiger Talk 1400 on Twitter, on Facebook, on, on uh, Instagram, or you can look up Ken Clark 1400 on Twitter and uh and instagram and you know don't worry about facebook i, I ain't too friendly <laughs> on facebook man i but put it in ig hit me up man <laughs> i got you man i got you man and uh again man as far as uh jsu though i dedicate this show to our father uh tiger Rashard anderson rest in peace brother you know what i'm saying like I said, man wild man my boy, he oh, was a man. wild man yeah. when I was when I was in school at the time. From not knowing him from '97 or '99, he was a wild man. So, you know, he he lived up to his nickname. Absolutely, but, but we he, gotta, he. Let me say this about that. I would say there's a lot of people that donate um, eighteen dollars and seventy seven cent on like donation giving days. We got mm -hmm. a day of giving coming up July 29th. I would challenge everybody in honor of Rashad. Donate forty six dollars if you if you're used to doing eighteen seventy seven make it forty six in, in in honor of, of Rashad Anderson man and uh, rest in peace to Wild Man you know he he'd be sorely missed we we shouted him out on our show that we recorded just last night and uh, you know man it, it's 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 a tough loss man yeah y'all hear it. JSU Day of Giving coming up July 29th. July 29th. Give what you can, you know, uh, but all will be appreciated. We're trying to hit a million dollars, man. I know that I know that National Alumni Association said 500k. We can double that, man. All this talking on Twitter, all this yapping, man. Put some on, put some in the pot, man. You know, all these cre content creators making money out of Jack State. Throw us a little something, something in there. I know, I know how them videos, man. You get them views, you get them checks, man. Man, I ain't oh, even got one yet, but you know what I'm saying? Because it's of the coming. simple fact that I went to Jackson State, I'm going to go ahead and do my donation to them. It's on coming. July 29th. You know yeah. um, and if anybody wants to do help donate to my channel, <laughs> my cash app is yeah. Holiday1925. That's with two L's, not one <laughs> with two. <laughs> All right. But man, again, man. In the pot to my boy, man. I, yeah. then, but then again, man. It's nice talking to you, my brother. Um, oh, all right. This is another HBCU Overdrive. I'm your boy, Doc Holiday, And as again, like I say, peace. All right. Yeah, I think we got it.